Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 127, Mine the Gap. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and irascible dungeon master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is James. James, tell everyone who you are playing. James Hands. Hey, everybody. I am James. I am playing Penton Chalice, a spell scale sorcerer who just came out to his girlfriend. That's right. As a dragon. <laughs> I, 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 I just, you know, being honest, I want you to know uh, I'm a dragon. Uh, I'm on fire. When we last left our adventurer, he had gone to uh, Massgate to retrieve Audrey 3, which uh, had been teleported there by the illusionist Thralaville, who has come with you. Uh, After some uh, mishap with the teleportation, uh, you were able to find your girlfriend, Scald, an uh, elf who uh, cannot see but can see better in a lot of ways. And y'all had made your way out to find Audrey, who had gone to the mines, where you had had a a rather interesting adventure to recover the earrings that had been stolen from Scald. Uh, You had defeated the the evil uh, leader there, who had a most unsettling penchant for uh, dolls. Creepy doll dude. Creepy doll dude. Um, (laughs) But he actually um, uh, did do one good thing, which was Scald was able to enchant the two dolls' eyes that that had been recovered. And that's how y'all had been able to communicate and keep up this long-distance relationship. So that there there was something good about it. Uh, But now, after encountering uh, a ghost uh, of the young woman, Erin Houghton, who had been uh, inadvertently killed by Audrey... Uh, it's important to remember that while Audrey is definitely not evil, uh, there, I mean, she just isn't, uh, Audrey is a creature of magic, a construct made from three, from a coven of hags, uh, and particularly empowered by the boo hag who was, uh, quite skilled at necromancy. And there is, there is, uh, necromantic aspects to Audrey, not least of which that her primary source of food is draining the blood and life uh, from her victims. Yeah, there's that. We also kill animals to eat, so that does not inherently make her evil. It's just very unsettling. True. It's, it all depends on what we feed her, I guess. That's true. Feeding her a cow as opposed to feeding her a, a you know a beggar is, is a very different thing. Uh, if you were a different party, you might be doing that. True. Uh, but now you have made your way to these mines uh, outside of Massgate, you had heard from your familiar, Aphiel, uh, the raven, that Audrey has gone into the mines. Uh, the gates are open. When you, when you first came, there was, there was gates around uh, where actually Curus had actually uh, assisted y'all, if you might remember. Yes. Uh, to climb over the gates and stuff. That's where y'all first ran into him again. I, I, wanna, I hope I run into him again just so I can hear you talk like him again. Oh, God. Uh, you just might. You might. This is Masquerade, after all. And when y'all left, Kyrus actually joined Vigil Fist's uh, group. Uh, that was the last you had seen of Kyrus, is that he had actually joined Vigil Fist. So he's, as far as you know, still in Masquerade. Yeah. Anyway, you have uh, come, and the gates are wide open. Uh, you don't see anyone just first looking in. Uh, when you last went here, now, obviously, it was under the control of a, you know, murderous, uh, I can't remember if he was an elf or half elf. I think he was half elf. You know, it was guarded Mm -hmm. and, uh, there are no guards outside. And as I recall, his right hand person took over the mines afterwards. That is correct. A, uh, dwarf, a dwarf by the name of Gillis. Ah, that's right. Okay. No guards out the, outside the facility. Um, let's go in. I think we won't need a light source because Skull doesn't need one. I don't need one. Uh, I don't know about uh, Vili over here. Um, is, is he human? The the uh, the illusionist. Uh, I'm going to say that he is. Uh, okay. Because I I for some reason I cannot find his character sheet, uh, which I sent over to Lee uh, when y'all were playing them, but I cannot for the life of me find it. So I've I've got of a. Of course, uh, that's why I made him come along. <laughs> Convenient for you. I've got a stand in here that I'm using for his spells, uh, different a different character sheet, but I cannot find it. It's making me mad. 
because I, I know I sent it to Lee. Yes, he is human. Well, then I guess I'll, unless he has his own light source of some sort, I guess I'll kick on my glow a little, you know, my soft glow, um, just for a little light for his benefit. Okay. Uh, as are you... Uh, the darkness. Well, I, and, and I'm just clarifying, are you going into the mines now? Um. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the... When y'all went here last time, uh, there was an area of the mines that Heor. Oh, yeah, yeah, Heor. Yeah, H-E-O-R. Right, right, right. Yes. So when you went in here last time, the elf Heor, he had actually um, turned sort of like the the original staging area of the mines into kind of like a retreat, uh, like a stronghold. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you could see that that is still there, but it's been sort of turned into a much more practical like storage area, okay. uh, as opposed to a uh, super creepy area filled with uh, shattered dolls. Uh, th- there is no evidence of those, uh, so that's probably a good thing. Yeah, uh, of all things considered. But uh, yes, he or uh, is certainly not in sight because y'all successfully killed him. Uh, but also, there is no Gillis that you can see or any mine workers. Does it seem like there's been activity there recently? Like you know, just wagons of Detrius or, you know. Since you have Aphiel, give me a Aphiel uh, empowered spot check. Oh, yeah, 23. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> much, much different when Aphiel is there to help out. Uh, you know, like there's a Beastmaster moment where you're looking through her eyes. <laughs> um, it, you get the impression that this definitely uh, has been used recently. Like this isn't, it's not like this been like weeks and weeks and there's dust settling. Like this place looks like it was occupied very recently. And uh, okay. you can't tell like if it was like two hours ago or two days ago, but somewhere in that time, you know, like clearly there's been activity. Okay. But it doesn't look like there's like a lot of stuff turned over and knocked over. Like there was a mass, you know, sudden exodus or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and actually uh, scald um, there. Well, I will say there is some evidence of like hurried, like some things knocked over and stuff, but you don't see okay. like evidence of like a, like a battle, you know, the, okay. that, that you would recognize like, you know, lightning scars on the wall and sword blood on the broken. floor. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, there isn't, there isn't any evidence of that as far as you can tell. And okay. Scald actually volunteers that like she works with Gillis now, uh, because this is a mine and they they bring ore and gems and, you know, she purchases some f- directly from uh, Gillis and they have right. a, they have a, a, a friendly relationship. They're not like best buds or anything, but they have a, a business relationship. And she was not aware of anything untoward happening recently. Uh, okay. I mean, it's been, it's been several weeks since she has had any uh, contact with Gillis. Uh, but that's because uh, what, what she, she says, I, I haven't really had a chance to talk to you about it, but I'm, I'm in charge of um, upgrading the defenses for the town. That's the uh, the impression I was getting. Yes. Well, uh, my my father had done g- several great services for the king. My my family had somewhat fallen out of, of regular contact with uh, with him, but actually, it was when y'all met the king, uh, and he had decided to upgrade the defenses. Uh, he remembered my my skills and so i'm actually in charge of upgrading the defenses around the city so that we will be defended if there's uh you know in addition to physical if there's magical attack i've been very busy i am bet you 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 seem like you have been very busy you have this like intense look about you like you've been focusing on things for far too long Mm -hmm. well how about this how about when 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 things have settled down and uh the the defenses are are complete which should be in a few months and uh you've you know saved the world uh then perhaps we can uh, uh take a vacation together that sounds tremendous ah, i there, there are some wonderful places i would love to show you uh that known known especially to the elves that i i think you would really enjoy excellent i can't wait and throttle deal wow. says i uh, don't mean to uh bother but uh, should we perhaps uh, task at hand task at hand uh, and he narrowly avoids running into a wall <laughs> because he, he's walking away from your light and your light is what's making him see I intentionally wait another five seconds and then start moving <laughs> uh, he, he kind of like you know he's trying to 
get the upper hand, but he's realizing that, like, you know, you are literally the light source. Now, he can, of course, create light because he's an illusionist, sure. but uh, he, he's, you know, saving his spells and such. You make your way down the mine. Um, this There's a main corridor, uh, and then you can tell that the mine uh, splits off uh, into different veins, and then there is also like a pulley system for lowering down into lower lower sections of the mine. I'm gonna, for once in Penton's life, he is gonna be a little proactive, um, and he is going to stop for a moment and uh, cast him on, upon himself uh, mage armor and his new spell, Stone Skin. Ah, so tell the listeners uh, what both mage armor and stone skin do. Uh, well, mage armor does uh, kind of the um, uh, the blocky force field thing, like in uh, the '80s version of Dune, um, <laughs> which yep. gives him a, a plus four uh, to his AC. Um, and stone skin um, basically toughens, you know, his skin, so it kind of turns a little more. The, the 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 supple scales kind of get a little more edgy and rough and um you know get a kind of like a uh, a platinum tinge to the edges of the of the scales it uh, basically what it does is it does uh 10 points of damage reduction against attacks that were up to 80 points which is 10 points you know per level so basically anytime i take get an attack against me i can take 10 points off the top of it until i use up that 80 points Ah, very, very good. And not a bad idea, because literally you are a party of casters. <laughs> exactly. So we have no healers in the group. You do not have any healers, and you do not have any bruisers. This is uh, a very, very smart, and you, you actually have an inspiration point, uh, but this is definitely one of those points where I would probably say, I'm going to give you an inspiration point for that, but you, you do currently have one. And remember, since I did say that uh, with allowing Audrey to be teleported, is you can use your inspiration point to force uh, someone else to roll. Uh, so okay. not not only can you re-roll any of your rolls, you can use it uh, if an enemy rolls. Uh, you can use your inspiration to force them to re-roll. Okay. Do you want to try to explore one of the side shafts? Uh, the there are basically three. You know, left, middle, think, think uh, you know, I have no memory of this place. But then <laughs> there's that, but then also a little further down, there's also the drop down to the lower sections. Okay. Um, I turn to Skull and say, do you get an inkling out of anything down here as to where we might go? I don't know how far your senses extend. I My augmented senses are limited to anywhere from 60 to 100 feet, depending on the sense. Uh, but I also have uh, all of my senses when I'm wearing both are augmented. It doesn't, it's, it's a very strange smell coming from down below. And I, I want to be very clear about this because I'm not saying that it smells like, you know, rotten meat or, you know, undeath or something like that. But there's a... Is it patchouli? It's patchouli. It's patchouli. There, there, <laughs> the, the entire staff, uh, this is Friday, uh, this is, uh... <laughs> you know, fantasy 420 and they are, they are, they've turned the entire mine into a hot box. <laughs> uh, and then what, you're actually at the top of the bomb. And just... Oh man. Yeah. Uh, actually, <laughs> that's so funny. Like I hear I was just, I'm messing around. This actually, I was going to say this. I was going to say it a little later, but I'm now I'm going to say it now because it's too funny not to. Um, as y'all approach and looking around, she was saying that there there is a, a very strange smell coming from down below, and as she says that, uh, that, from the you know the edge of your radiance, this like comes up from below, and it is a like a, for lack of a better term, it's like a puff of greenish smoke. Oh no, not the green smoke! No, not the green smoke. Um. Uh, I, I, Penton just had a duh moment. Um, he closes his eyes and reaches out to see if he can feel Audrey and what direction she might be in. Well, uh, she is actually with you right now because she she didn't want to just fly ahead in the mines. Aud Audrey? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, der, 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 der. I was thinking Afield. I was thinking Afield. Right. Uh, blah, blah, right. blah. The hut. I'm, um, I'm feeling out for the hut. Yes. Uh, so I would like you to make an arcana roll. 
Okay. Uh, and how high you roll will determine various things. Uh, how about a 31? What will that get me? That'll do it. You, like, put your hand out and close your eyes, and you feel the, the very edges of Audrey, and you feel fear. Uh, you feel restraint. You feel pain. Uh, you can't control her from where you are, but mm-hmm. you can tell that she has sensed your presence. You know, like like the the equivalent of someone who's far away and, and hears the voice of someone that they've been looking for. Right. She is definitely there. And now you, you know, focus a little bit harder with that 31. It is definitely coming from below. Of course, where the green smoke is coming from. Um, when you say restrain, restraint as in like she's being restrained? Yes, you think so. Okay. I I turned to the other two and I said, I think we need to hurry. I, I have this horrible image of her being turned on a spit right now. Um, we, we'd best get moving. Uh, okay. And she's this way, down where the horrible green smoke is coming from. Um, as I recall, that stuff is not good for you. Um, so if you have something you can do about that, that would be good. Um, at the very least, you know, cover your mouth <laughs> and nose. Uh, and everyone is warned, so uh, they there isn't really a lot <laughs> that they can do. Yeah. And and unfortunately, uh, it, it's not. I mean, it's not a good smell. Like, because of course you're getting little whiffs of it, uh, and she can smell it way better than you because all of her senses are enhanced. And yeah. so she's kind of like not not loving that. Uh, but at yeah. least now they are they are warned against it because of what you said. I wish uh, I had that bottle with me. That air yeah. bottle. Unfortunately, um, where did that get traded away when they were trying to fix Osakai? You have it. Uh, you do have it. It is in the bag of holding, and the bag of holding is oh, under. It's on Audrey. the underside of Audrey. Yeah, mm. it's in the hut. Okay, nuts. well, at least it's not far away. So if it comes, true. Here, we can try. That's and true. Have it. Uh, yeah, so right. I, just so you know, that's where it is. Uh, okay, because you you actually were the last one to discover it, but of course you didn't have any use for it, and you don't right. use magic items. Exactly. Uh, so you, it actually ended up in the bag of holding. Well, so good to know. It is swinging um, underneath Audrey right now. <laughs> um, not unlike a hashtag hot nut. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So I guess we're going to make our way toward the green noxious fumes. Yay. Yay. Uh, so there is a device to, uh, you know, raise and lower. It's, it's, it's essentially a big bucket. Uh, and it can, it is of dwarven make, so it, it's well made, and you can actually use it while inside the bucket. You know, it's okay. basically like you turn like a crank with both hands. I'm not going to lie, I'm getting a super big Temple of Doom vibe from this. Oh, yeah. So it, <laughs> uh, if, if, I, if I wasn't so terrified of YouTube at all times, or right now you, in the background you'd be hearing, Lada, Yada. Uh, from the, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Kalima. Uh, but no, that is definitely kind of the vibe that you're getting. Yeah. All um, right. So down, down we go. Down, down to Goblin Town. Yep. Um, uh, my lads. Ha ha. Uh, sorry. Uh, man, I can I can definitely almost sing all of that. As you uh, make your way down, I would like everyone to make a fortitude saving throw. We get advanced because we're prepared. Uh, I will allow it. Yay! I can talk my way into anything. <laughs> uh, well, and also I'm allowing it because this is you're still kind of far away from a, a big concentration of it. Right. Um, I got a 15. Okay. Uh, that succeeds. Uh, you Whew. manage to you know basically put your put your robe over your face. Uh, and unfortunately, even with advantage, uh, Thraravil fails and mm. uh so please enjoy the rest of the ride down as he wildly vomits <laughs> yeah uh, he manages to get most of it over the edge but not all of it as he's like you know he must be careful we must <laughs> and uh you... i'm almost interested to see what happens when penton vomits because he doesn't eat anymore that's true that's true very likely it would <laughs> just be like like bile you know yeah just <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Like just dust comes out. Um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you, you know, I just realized Penson's basically like those people who claim they live off sunlight. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's he's all but like uh, 
but chock full of chlorophyll. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, and he doesn't, of course, he doesn't even live off that. But no. as you as you make your way down, I I, I want to kind of set the stage for you. You're this is a very big open area. You can see like very in the distance, uh, several other you know smaller openings that go into different veins. This is a very large chamber, uh, and this is not uh, a mine. I mean, this is a mine, but this part is a cavern, if you see. Uh, this is a mine okay. that, is, that is broken into a cavern because no one would build a giant chamber <laughs> uh, mine. That wouldn't make any sense. Right. Um, but you can see where they have, like, burrowed into different parts of it as the uh, vein uh, called for. The, the smell is beginning to intensify here. It is a bad smell, but again, it's not like rotting meat. It's, it's wrongness is the smell of the, of the green puff. Mm-hmm. The last time that y'all came out of this is um, you weren't as directly on this part of the mission, but uh, Osokai, all the way back in Massgate and Tix, found a insane druid uh, who had a belt made of gold that was giving off these little puffs of gold, of the smoke. Yeah. Wasn't and, there? Some, I think there was some residual green stuff on the spent gold stones uh, near the Roper pit as well. That is absolutely correct and 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 very good job very good uh, perception of remembering that uh you definitely recognize this as very similar to that pit what you found there was a circle of of broken stones uh and everything inside was just destroyed and uh even that roper uh, who obviously was underground. Uh, whatever happened there damaged that roper. It was blind. Uh, did not do good things to it. Uh, so very, very good memory in remembering that. And uh, you you can't see like a specific source for the smoke as y'all are coming down, but you can see off in the, on the very edge, there are figures and such down there. Uh, I should also mention, because you would definitely see this in the dark, uh, there does appear to be something very hot down there. Something, mm. uh, uh, I don't want to say like it's like a river of fire or something like that, or, you know, a river of magma, but there is some kind of smelting something going on down there okay. in the distance. And that's when your bucket doom, hits to the bottom and there's like a slight squeak as it lands on the uh, sick that landed before it. <laughs> it is not a Yum. great sound. Not a great sound. Um, what would you like to do? So what what can we what can we see directly from our vantage point right now? I mean, are, are we seeing any people around, um, or is it like far too far ahead to be able to see at this point? It's too far um, ahead to make out a lot of details because, of course, your light extends to the extent of your light. Uh, there right. is light coming from whatever that you know smelting or magma or whatever it is. Uh, in the distance, but it's it's faint because it's so far away. It's you know right. like a few hundred feet uh, yards away, um, and and it's dark. Uh, you can hear some voices, uh, and you think that they are voices of um, distress, shall we say? Uh, right. It's not like like screams, but you're like kind of more like kind of sounds. Well, I say let's try moving up uh, as quietly as we can to stay out of stay out of earshot and uh, get closer and kind of assess what's happening and see if we can get a better view. Okay. Uh, I need you to make a roll. Oh. Uh, definitely your best, and that is uh, move silently. Move silently. And just so you know, this will be an average of the three party members. Right. I'm just making sure I'm using the right number because, uh, yeah, because he feels move silently. It's better than mine. Um uh, then that's a 22. 22. Uh, so uh, you got a 22. Uh, uh, what I'm going to tell you is that everyone got a different number, and it was a <laughs> different number uh, er, somewhere on. However, uh, while one of them rolled very poorly, uh, the other one rolled a 15. And so that is overall a success. Okay. Uh, and so you all are, are fairly quiet as you're coming forward. As you make your way past, there there are uh, giant stalagmites. Wait. Yes. Stalagmites. stalagmites. T Wait. is top. T- yeah, stalactites. No, no, I'm saying uh, they're on the ground. Uh, oh, stalagmites. Okay. I, I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was saying it and then I was like, wait, did I say that? Okay, yes. Uh, stalagmites coming up from the ground. Uh, several of them are like kind of shaped into bowls. 
Uh, and so they kind of break up the landscape that you're walking on. The ground mm-hmm. is very uneven uh, just from the natural formations uh, sure. over however many years uh, as you make your way forward. And you can hear, uh, again, those those cries come more <laughs> ecstatically now. And uh, that's when you hear a scream. A curdling scream. Just, and then it very quickly is cut off. Okay. Um, as much as I want to rush in, that's stupid. So um, just yep. have to keep getting, uh, keep inch, inching our way closer um, okay. and let's see what we can see. Probably very uh, wisely uh, decide to do that. As a matter uh, of fact, as we get closer to the source, the light source, um, could we maybe do a little hide action um, just to keep out of sight until we can assess the situation? Give me a, a hide roll. And thank you, Aphiel, for the plus 10 to my hide. Um, that's a 24. Okay. Um, so you roll a 24, and uh, uh, Scald actually rolls very well as well. She's a very slight, very dexterous. Uh, she you know, literally works with jewels all day. Uh, very dexterous. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Thraraville <laughs> rolled a one. Uh, and while on the average, that's still a general thing. I mean, a one is still a, a one. It's not It's not the same as in combat, right. but it's still a failure. And so there is a moment when he is um, overdoing it a little bit in his uh, presentation of, of being <laughs> stealthy. You know, like he's, he's over stealthing. <laughs> like imagine Jim Carrey in a role, like trying to be sneaky. Mm-hmm. And launched uh, over and high stepping, you know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and he his foot kind of catches on the edge of one of those stalag mites, and uh, like a little bit of the rock breaks off, and <laughs> and whatever like the the sounds that you're hearing there like stop. Uh, you don't know if you've been seen, but you have been heard. Right. Ooh, misdirection. Try. Um, I'm going to um, empathize to a feel to. Fly up toward the top of the cavern. Okay. Flap, flap, flap. Flap, flap, flap. <laughs> and hope that they think that's what made the noise. Okay. Uh, so Aphiel purposely and, and flaps up. Uh, and she uh, was trying to fool them, and she rolled a 19. I actually probably uh-huh. should have you rolled up for that, but uh, uh, it seems to work. I'll take it. Whatever, <laughs> whatever uh, is there... The sounds that you're hearing, uh, and now you are very clearly, and, and I want to be clear, you weren't hearing this before because you would have heard it. Uh, it's right. kind of hard not to. You begin to hear the ting, 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 of, of metal. Forging. Of forging, yeah. Okay. Uh, that, you definitely would have heard that before, so you haven't heard it till now. You can now try to basically peek if you would like to. Uh, you can try to sneak closer, uh, or you can try to do something else. All right, well, I can already feel the concept that they're like using like the souls of creatures to infuse magic weapons. And that's why somebody screamed right before they were forging. And that's just mm. where my mind goes with that. Um, but I got to, yeah, we have to peek around a stalagmite and uh, see the horror uh, that is prevented, presented toward us. Give me one more hide roll, but I'm going to allow it at advantage because you did such a, because a field rolled so well. Okay. Uh, oh no! no. Um, every now and then, something interesting happens, like when you roll two ones. Oh no! <laughs> well, as as the dungeon master, my job is not to punish uh, players. My job is when you fail, is not to like smack you over the head, but it is a moment that something interesting is about to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what happens is you look around and at that moment, this actually isn't your fault. Like it's not like you did something wrong. It's just at that particular moment, the creature that you were looking at happens to turn in just the perfect way and your eyes meet. Oh. At least they would except this creature does not have a head. Oh, no. Um, What you behold is a a creature of darkness, and I mean that not literally like like the uh, shadow belt guy you you mentioned earlier that you regretted not stealing that belt. Um, Yeah. uh, This creature literally is 
dark. Like its skin is like an ebony color. Uh, it has a very rock-like texture. Uh, so imagine a, a hulking humanoid. It is very big, but I, I was trying to see if it had the actual size here. I don't see it. So I'm going to say it is... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It is large, you know, so okay. troll-sized. Right. Um, and it is... Uh, imagine a, a humanoid figure, but where its head should be is just this kind of shapeless lump into the shoulders. And behind it is a long... Uh, undulating tail. Now, normally this creature would have what's called a catch pole, which is a very long pole with a sort of almost half moon shape uh, at the top. Right, that's for for pulling people off of horses. It, precisely, precisely. Yeah. But it is actually in the ground, like it's shoved into the ground and, and standing there. It is actually at the forge, and that's where the fire that you saw, and you absolutely nailed with your perception uh, that it is uh, forging the now dead body of uh, what you can only presume to be one of the miners. Uh -huh. And everywhere that it has struck with the hammer has become a sword. And so it is literally shaping this, this dead body into a weapon. Oh my. Oh, that's no, no bueno very upsetting to see this creature sees you and i need you to roll for initiative okay oof 20 A 20 for penton and uh let's see how scald gets she rolls a one. Oh, uh so that's Probably actually that's a five for scald uh she is very dexterous and thraleville Ooh, <laughs> he actually gets a 23 Oh, uh, my. Well, let's see job. what he does. Yeah, this will be interesting. I was kind of hoping you would go first. Uh, Me too. Now, <laughs> um, hmm. uh, so the uh, creature uh, gets a 17 with his advantages. Uh, so he actually is still behind y'all. Uh, what are your knowledges? Do you have any knowledges? Uh, but, but other than Arcana, no. Okay, go ahead and make an Arcana check for me, but you will need to roll very high. Okay. This is not like something that you would just necessarily know but the thing about a sorcerer is they are kind of they're not quite as much as bards but sorcerers like travel around and they hear lots of things and that's how they get a lot of their knowledge right so it's possible 33 wow really yes okay so i rolled uh, a 19 yeah you were years ago you were in a bunting uh and you had had done a a, a slight uh, a charisma check and gotten in when you normally would not have, and you were able to like, hey, I'm a I'm a spell scale sorcerer. You know, people hate I'm me. A, I'm a weirdo. I'm a, yeah. yeah, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a loser, baby. Why don't you kill me? Um, yeah. And uh, so you were in this bunting, and there was some kind of devil there. Like literally, a devil was down there, and it was uh, uh, just just holding court and telling stories. Mm. And with that 33, you heard a story about a blacksmith who was unparalleled in his craft. And he was able to shape an ore uh, that had never been used before to make the highest quality weapons. But he was infusing them with magics that were too powerful. And when he was almost finished, there was a, an explosion. <laughs> His workshop burned to the ground, and out of the ashes came what were known as prowling demons. Ooh. And prowling demons are creatures literally made of ore. The The truth is, is uh, you know, like he was just telling a story, so you don't have like lots of details, but no one really knows what they want or what they do, but it is known that there's usually something involved in blacksmithing you know that they are are quite quite deadly and you also know that they have been known to hurl lightning oh uh you don't know anything about any weaknesses or anything like that okay but that uh, with that 33 you did actually get that information okay oh and uh sorry it is uh Thraudeville's turn he gestures and he casts out and he goes zim zalabim and hmm. he takes off flying into the air. He oh. begins to fly. Nice. Uh, yeah, 
uh, he realizes he doesn't want anything to do with that catch bowl. He was considering using Shocking Grasp, and he's like, oh, that's dumb, uh, <laughs> and decides he doesn't want it to do that. Uh, so that will actually bring it to you, Pinton. All right. Um, a quick question. Where is that light coming from? Is it like is it like from a forge or yes. is it from... uh, so he okay. has he has turned one of the bowls of the stalagmites into a forge uh, and so it is it is crude but it is still like very functional okay uh, where where is that relative to is oh, it is it between him and me is it behind him next to him it it is literally to the side of him so it's not like it's not blocking you two okay it's like just to the right of him. Um, also, I'm, assu- I'm assuming that Audrey is not in eye shot at this point. Uh, well, now that you're stepped out completely, uh, you can actually see Audrey, and you can see several other people uh, that are all bound and gagged. Uh, Audrey is just ludicrously covered in chains, like, <laughs> like, like stupidly. Like, they're, they're like she is nearly fifty percent chains, okay. um, and so she is very, very tied up. Comically restrained. All right, and I can only oh, I just I'm just picturing the kind of weapon that he would try forging her into. Um, not a pretty picture. So yeah, it's I it, I think it's time, I think it's time to unveil the monster. Um, Penton is going to cast another new spell that he picked up recently, which is enlarge person. All right, and he's going to cast that on himself. Okay. Um and. Uh, as a bonus action, as you have so graciously pointed out, it is that um, he is going to transform into his dragonborn form. <laughs> so you have to describe to me this this sequence of events when you okay. uh, both become um, puffed up Penton and go dragonborn simultaneously. What does that look like? Okay, well, let's see. Um, so I have already previously done the stone skin and the mage armor so those are still going um so he puts a hand to himself and uh gets about i don't know about three or four feet taller Uh, he gets a plus two to his strength stuff um at the same time he he does his light transformation where he just washes over with a white light and as he's getting larger he finishes into his dragonborn form, standing there hulking, uh, fingers dripping with platinum liquid, and uh, or talons, excuse me, dripping with platinum liquid, and uh, basically just going kaiju. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, I, as the dungeon master, will allow one attack this round for sheer awesomeness of choice. Okay. Uh, well, my my attack was going to be basically a a bull rush into this okay uh, forger, um, and since he's not in direct line with the with the with the forge that I was going to try and attack and uh, push him into, um, I'll just go you know I'll just go with basically a, a prone attack, a, a turn prone attack, a knockover. Okay. Um, and. Uh, if it's possible, I'd like to use my talons to try and knock him over. So not necessarily a shoulder rush, but more of a, a rush up and slash, if that's a possibility. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll just take the knock over. Uh, you know, there's a reason why I'd want to get my talons in there. That would be beneficial. Okay, so I imagine I'll need to roll the hit on that. There, there are times hmm. when bad things happen, um, but there are also times when good things happen, like <laughs> when you roll a 20. Yes! Ooh, natural 20. <laughs> okay, so um, he basically, uh, at the fury of seeing these innocent people being turned into weapons and seeing Audrey comically bound with chains, um, he kaijus up, it runs furiously at this demon and slashes upwards with his platinum-tinged claws and goes for a knockdown. All right. Obviously, hit. Uh, yeah. You also um, succeed in knocking down, and I would like you to also roll for damage. Okay, now I need to remember what my damage is for my claws, and they get upgraded because I'm bigger. Also, they were a D4, so they're going to be a D6. Plus one, plus 
three. Um, so that's 10 points of damage. And then on top of that will be the ravaging damage from his uh, platinum ice that coats his uh, claws, mm -hmm. uh, which does a D6 uh, dex damage. Nice. It's, it's not a poison, it's a ravage. So if he's got any kind of poison immunities, it wouldn't apply. Okay. Uh, he does not have a poison immunity. Okay. Um, so shall I roll the d6? Yes, please. Okay. It's a four. So uh, so he does takes four points of dex. Damage. So his dex is lowered by four. Interesting. For being. Interesting. I know that makes calculations a little tricky. tricky for no, 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 no. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll get to the details of that later, but that was really interesting. All the things you could have done, that was a really interesting one. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, tell me what's the, the total damage besides the dex? Uh, it was 10 points of claw damage. Ten, and that was with it doubled? Yeah. Okay, okay gotcha. Uh, I know claws don't do as much, but still, that he is knocked prone. You reduce his dex. Oh, I'm sorry. It was doubled, so it's 20 points. I'm, I apologize. Okay, 20 points. Okay. I, I thought even with the, with that, it still should have been more. So, I'm uh, yeah, that makes absolute sense. It just... Your claws just... And this is one of the first times you really used your claws like this in combat. True. Uh, and, you you know, like, it's very natural to you, and especially with the, the kind of guidance that you've gotten from... Um, uh, that you got from uh, Raja, the, the monk, uh, mm -hmm. to kind of help you out a little bit. But still, even still, th this was uh, a lot. Uh, and, and you just perfectly nailed him. And he, uh, he did fall backwards. And I, I'm going to... Just give a quick roll for him. I'm going to see if he rolls a one. <laughs> nope, just a ten. If he rolled a run, if he rolled a one, he would have fallen into the uh, forge. Um, I would have done that to y'all too, just so you know. Uh, I get it. <laughs> but uh, now it is uh, his turn, and you see his. He stumbles down, and he is going to uh, bring himself up, grabbing that patch pole. Uh, what happens when a creature stands up? in range of another creature. Oh, does he get an attack of opportunity? I believe that he does. Uh, and it's well, then. Just, just you, because Scald hasn't had a chance to enter combat, and uh, Throttle yeah, is a, flying. A little ways off. Yes, uh, but it is uh, your turn. Okay, well, let's do it. Um, let's go with a bite. All right. Since I only get the one attack. 17 to hit. Uh, that will actually hit. Ooh, Okay. I figured he was made of stone. It might be dice dicey. <laughs> I, I was expecting the armor class to be higher, uh, but it, it you know, it, it, I mean, it's not low, but still. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, so that is six more points of damage from the bite. Uh, as he stands up, he is going to. Uh, that so Nibra. what's that? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, his original plan is he was sizing up what what you know what what he was seeing. Uh, he was going to try to... This catch pole is so long that it is uh, reasonable that he could have hit all three of you. Really? Uh, with it, yes. He, it, it's, in fact, it's, it's actually an ability he has. Uh -huh. um, however, she's way back there. He's flying. You're up in his face. Uh, so it, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, even, with a, even with a 10 foot reach, he can't hit the best he could maybe do is get two of you. And even right. then, he'd have to he'd have to move again uh, and give you another attack of opportunity, which technically you wouldn't get, but I would allow it since you're moving past him. Uh, mm -hmm. So instead, uh, he is going to take his catch pole, slam it into the ground, and that top curved part uh, emits a bolt of lightning. Uh, and what I had said before is uh, I will allow a character to hit two without having to roll. Uh, hitting three, they would have to roll. But in this particular case, it is impossible. He can't hit three. Okay. Uh, but he can hit two. He can hit you, and he can hit Scald. Yeah, um, okay. And so I need both you and Scald to make a reflex saving throw. I believe that is for lightning. Ooh, 21. Very, very good. And Scald... Ooh, did not do as well. <laughs> That's funny. I was trying to look up lightning, uh, and it kept trying to pull up uh, lightning adapters for D and D. <laughs> a lot of D sixes. Uh, well, there's only one six, so that's good. Two sixes. Sorry, 
So that is 14 points of damage, halved for you. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, uh, not halved for uh, Scald. Uh, and she screams behind you as she is electrocuted. Uh, it takes 14, so you will take... Uh, so obviously you take uh, 7 damage. Okay. Uh, so I'm you're you're down by 8 total. But of course, you are beefed up a little bit right now because you're in your dragon form, aren't you? Yes. Uh, um, in addition to the spell you cast earlier. Right. Uh, which was very, very smart. All right, so now I'm down to 86 hit points. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, you, 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 have, you have gotten uh, beefier over time. Yeah. Uh, but certainly... Yeah, because my, my hit points double when I go into my Dragonborn form. He has lost his second attack because of your attack. Oh, right, because he, yeah. yeah, he has to get up. Right, that makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. Uh, well, also because of that dex damage that you did. Ah, right. Um, oh, did that, uh, did that take him out? Take out his second attack? <laughs> uh, that's that's what I'm ruling. I, I, I'm I'm going to get to that uh, in a little bit, okay. but uh, we'll we'll skip past that for now. Um, so, not to steal your thunder, huh. but the strangest thing happens. Uh, Aphiel comes flying forward. Now, Aphiel has aided you a little bit in battle, but mostly you keep her out of the fray. Sure. Um, she comes down, and now the thing you didn't notice when she landed on when she landed on Scald's shoulder uh -huh. was that when she dived before y'all teleported, she actually stole the ring that y'all got off the entombed. She stole it because she is a raven and it is shiny, shiny thing. and she wanted it. Uh, and I, I had rolled earlier, and she had just decided she wanted that. Uh, which is why I am so amused at the, the particular spell that you cast, because as she comes down to dive bomb, oh, no. <laughs> she starts getting bigger <laughs> and bigger <laughs> and bigger <laughs> and an embiggened raven just slams into this uh, uh, unfortunately she rolls a four oh, uh, so a he is a for effort though a for effort. She's she is able. She, he's able to deflect her with his catch pole, uh, which is the sort of thing he's really good at. Uh, but but now there is a massive. Uh, she is um, actually the size of a um, medium creature now. Right. Uh, so she is obviously she's not large. She's not like a giant troll, but she is a human sized raven. <laughs> so she weighs, uh, you know, she probably doesn't weigh quite a few hundred pounds because she's, you know, got hollow bones and right. everything. But, but uh, she's she very, probably, very big. She could probably still fit on my shoulders since I'm now, like, between 10 and 12 feet tall. That right now? Yeah, yeah, that would be <laughs> hilarious. Uh, so that was that was Afield, and now it's Skeld's turn. Uh, now she was going to throw something that uh, gives quite a, a, a bing-bang-boom. The problem is you're standing there. Right. And so she doesn't want to do that. And so instead, she uh, she's reaching into her pouch, and then she like hesitates, and then she just goes, Ugh, and she reaches forward and casts a spell. One might say that you begin to blur. Oh, yes, uh, she casts blur on you. Uh, you had actually seen this spell uh, cast by the uh, mercenary that y'all had teamed up with, Grimhilda. Very good. Uh, as she had blur uh, in her thing. It is not uh, invisible, of course. Uh, there's a 20% chance that, that the uh, they will simply miss because they can't see you. Yeah. Um, okay, Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. And you, you literally begin to like move around and you so know exactly what she's fuzzy done. Fuzzy kaiju, sweet. Uh, actually bring it all the way back around to Thraudavil. <laughs> and uh, he actually doesn't have a lot of really good offensive spells, which is why he did that teleport back when y'all were fighting. Uh, but he still has the old standard that you're very familiar with, and flying up where the thing can't hit him, uh -huh. uh, he casts Magic Missile. Uh -huh. uh, boom, 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 boom. As the Magic Missile comes flying forward. Ain't nothing wrong with it. How many does he have? Like four or five? Uh, four. Okay. 16 plus. So he actually does 20 points of damage. Nice. So uh, he's now, he's actually matched you. For your really nice hit, uh, so he's now done forty points of damage, and he is—he uh, doesn't want to get anywhere near this thing very reasonably. I do not and blame he's, him. He's—he's <laughs> letting you—he's letting you do the the dusting up. That will bring it to uh, you. Vincent. Okay, it's your turn. Okay. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to say for uh, for flavor, the human-sized uh, Aethil lands on your shoulder. Excellent. At this moment. Um, uh, question for the DM. Uh, mm-hmm. Does my Bahamut modifier, is that considered spellcasting in the sense of my retaining my dragonborn form adding my box cars to an attack no okay because i'm no. thinking okay um so r- if, if you'll roll with me here um mm-hmm. in in the vein of the kaiju uh penton rears back his head lightning uh, uh, cr- crackles around his mouth and he uh, expels a dragon-headed bolt of lightning from his mouth at the dude <laughs> I'm, I, I want to make sure I understand. You, you're casting lightning at him. Oh, he, I have dragon breath. Oh, you have dragon breath. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, breath. no, no. Sorry, I, I, I rescind everything I said. No, <laughs> you absolutely have a breath attack. Yes. Um. Yes. Uh, no. And that does not count as a magic attack. That is an innate part of your dragonborn form. Right. I was just, I was just uh, wondering if the, if the box carring it from, from Bahamut's no, bonus. No. No. You can, you can absolutely infuse that okay. with uh, Bahamut. Yep. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to be clear about because I didn't want to you know okay. mess up my yeah no my form as, at the as time. A, for for the listener, if you cast any spell of any kind while you're in this form, you immediately revert to your true form. Right. So I've yeah. got it. That's that's my last resort at this point. So uh, so that's six. So he'll obviously save a reflex save to have whatever I roll up here. Uh, that's a total of twenty five points. Twenty five, um, and that's lightning damage. Yes. Well, uh, he cast lightning earlier. <laughs> uh, he cast lightning earlier. So just like you, you're immune to lightning, right? No. No, neither is he. So you do full damage. Oh, uh, cool. and, and I'm so sorry. I was looking at something else. Tell me that damage again. 25. 25. I think uh, and, he didn't roll well. <laughs> uh, no, no, he rolled a four. Ah. Uh, so he totally failed his roll as you just catch him full in the face the scales uh, that are that are actually still in that rock formation uh, like like little energy goes up almost like uh, Godzilla as just yeah 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 as it comes forward as we, we've got a full on uh, kaiju fight going here and I, I'm loving every minute of it and that will actually bring it to Aphiel and Aphiel <laughs> is going to boom, the, the, the wings come out and she leaps forward and both claws extended and attacks. And fortunately, she rolls a nine. Uh, but I'm actually going to give her one more. Oh, God, she rolled a nine and an eight. Eesh. Poor Aphiel is just having trouble adapting to this this uh, big form. Yeah, she's new at this. That's uh, okay. She's new at this. She doesn't. She's not really combat heavy. Uh, but that will bring it to Scald. Uh, and now that, that just there's been a little bit more distance between you two mm-hmm. as you backed up to breathe fire at it as opposed to like you know uh getting up uh, and dust. getting up in his face right yeah dusting up oh i missed the creature oh uh yeah i forgot him uh it was supposed to be the creature and then aphil and since aphil missed it doesn't matter true the creature it is going to leap straight up into the air oh and it's going it's coming back down and trying to strike you with its catch bowl aha uh-huh. um you must make a DC 14 saving throw. This is not a it's not a normal attack. This is an ability. Okay, that it has. so this is a, what a dex. Uh, 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 yes, you need you need to get a 14 or better on your dex saving throw. Okay. Um, oh yes, uh, 22. So it says uh, it must save or take damage. It does not say save for half. Right. Yeah, because so, it's not an area of effect, right? It's a strike. Yeah. It's a strike, uh, but so the the it either hits or it doesn't. Right. Uh, so the the catch pole just crashes into the ground, but uh, you are able to sidestep it, uh-huh. uh, and you think that's probably because of that dexterity damage that you did to it. It uh. is really moving very jerkily. It is having trouble moving, uh, and now that it has is definitely uh, that catch pole is ten feet long. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it slams into the ground and you step back and that's when Skald takes a step forward and she throws a little tiny bead at him. Aw, yeah. uh, <laughs> yay! And it, and it just goes, <laughs> and then it just goes, boom! And uh, I might say a 
speed of force. Oh, uh, you know what? It, you know what sound it makes is uh, you remember from uh, I think it's episode two. That's uh, Jango, what I was thinking Jango too. Fett's, uh, Sonic yep. mine things. Yep. Yeah. And I in love fact, they brought them back in the Mandalorian, and I was very happy. Yeah. When they made that sound, so you are right on the edge of this ten foot radius. So I would like you to make a reflex saving throw. However, I am going to let you make it at advantage. Okay. Because you're right on the edge, but you still need to. 16. That will do it. Ooh. That's what you, I mean, not, not, you actually could have done lower than that, but not. Um, still pretty close. Still pretty close, yeah. Uh, so just 5d6. 10. 18. So you'll take 19 points of damage uh, as just this tiny little bead flings from her hand. And there's just this moment of it is just like you said, and and the rock of him, the the and what you see is that like he is stone, but he is metal, like he is made like there there is like it's it's like real ore where it's like rock and metal, right? But there's a lot of metal in there, and like what happens is like the rock parts of him are like just broken away. Um, and just chunks of it fall to the ground. And he doesn't make any noise because he doesn't have a head. <laughs> um, but, like, he reacts, uh, you know, he reflexes back. Uh, discomfort, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, as she makes a good hit on him. And that will bring it to Thralaville. <laughs> he is uh, going to try something a little different uh, because his spells are a little different. No, he's not stupid enough to try to deafen him because he doesn't even know if he would have ears True. or not uh, without him having. So he's going to fly down. He's used his magic missile. Uh, so he is going to fly down and try to... Uh, he saw uh, you successfully uh, kaiju lightning breath. Mm -hmm. So he's going to fly down and he's going to try to shocking grasp. And he actually hits. All right. Uh, with, his, with his bonus, uh, he actually hits. <laughs> A little face uh, slap, like fly by fl face slap. <laughs> it really is. He just comes by and he's just like, peep. But it's like the the the, the little peep has a uh, joy buzzer, <laughs> uh, because that is man. That's all. That's a recurring theme. Is five d six. Wow, that's, that's uh, quite the grasp. Damage. Yeah, that's that is the damage that he does. Eighteen. No, no, nineteen. Another nineteen. Weird. Nineteen points of damage. And and this creature is looking like when he hits it, it just that that just courses through him, and the the places that you have already damaged in the chest area, uh, you can see like they just start begin to splinter and and break and crack, and there's all these these uh, stone sounds, and he's jittering and 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 juddering, and like any sane creature would run now, like there's no way a creature would stay taking this much catastrophic damage. But prowling demons don't follow regular rules. Mm -hmm. And it's your turn. Okay. Well, I am all done with this. Um, he's hurt my girl. He's bound up my house. Um, I'm going to use my second breath attack, which I have, have now at, a, at I'm eighth uh, level. That's right. <laughs> and um, infuse this one again and hope that this finishes this thing off. Um, so let's see again. Uh, reflex save, which <laughs> is a little modified down um, against for this for half. Twenty one points. Twenty one points. Uh, he had seven hit points left. Oh, so even if he did save, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yes, uh, but the but the part that that I want to tell you now that that's so funny, especially with a reflex save. This creature, even though he is very tough. Uh, his natural dexterity is six. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so when you hit him, his dexterity went down to two. Oh. Minus four. Uh, now his, his armor actually didn't change because it was a nat his natural body armor is actually what gave him his armor. It was sure. 15. So that actually didn't change. Uh, but like he could barely move. Like you, you did that. That was a really good attack uh, against this specific creature. Because even though like a lot of his other stats were high, he had just a stupidly low dex. Uh, so this this rock and an ore creature uh, who's trying to swing at you with this catch pole as you come forward, describe to me how do you destroy him? 
All right. Well, I'm basically just going to take, you know, ground my feet, sumo stance, arms pulled back, and just let every ounce of electricity that I have in my system out in this guy just blast until his metal heats up and the stones melt off of his brain. Uh, and you just see it running down. And again, it can't scream, but if it could, uh, it would scream as it just slowly turns to slag on the ground. And it, it, what you do, I, I do want to say that even with that flavor, like you do melt him somewhat, uh, the metal that he's made of is so tough that only like the, the direct impact, like where the, where your flame just becomes like blue, you know, uh, it does actually melt there, but the rest of him just kind of loses cohesion and he just, no more. You are victorious. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Scald comes up and she uh, goes, that was amazing! And, and uh, like, throws her arm around your, your oversized leg uh, in a very unscald like way. She's usually <laughs> a little more reserved, but, like, she's so giddy with this combat. Uh, um, what are you going to do? Uh, thank you, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to... Uh, uh, um, drop the drop the dragon form at this point because it seems okay. like there's nothing else in here. I didn't get a sense of any other creatures or dangers. Um, you you do not no, okay. nothing that you could see. Um, and now that you could see more clearly, uh, there like I said, there there is Audrey just stupidly wrapped up right. in chains. Uh, oh, oh, as a matter and, of fact, uh, scratch that. I'm not going to do that yet. Um, after after um, Skulls has gotten her squeeze out, um, I'm going to walk over to. Audrey, and just use my beefed up, enlarged dragon bo- dragon form strength to uh, snap some chains off. Okay, give me a quick strength check. Just just okay. a straight straight old strength check. I want to see what happens. I actually have a strength bonus now. That's exciting. You do. You do. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, so like. Just you get up there, and there's like a there's like a little moment where you're like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work, uh, and then but then you grab and just, ching, and uh, the the central chains just break, and Audrey is able to shift itself uh, free and and just like the again you don't speak directly to her like you do Aphil, but you get like senses and emotions and images, and it's just you mm-hmm. know joy, freedom, uh, glad to see you, you know, just things like that, very. A uh, little hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, not ravenous. Uh, she had Scald had actually been taking care of Audrey while you were uh, yeah. in the last couple of days. Uh, you also see probably about two dozen miners, and among them is Gillis. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They are all wrapped up in chains, and they are all gagged. Okay. Um, are they're not like in a cage or anything. They're just like loose. They're, they're loose, <laughs> as it were. They are loose. Yeah. Okay. Um. Are the, are the chains locked? Um, should I be worried about finding a key, or should I stay in this form and break the chains? Uh, off of they are they are um, just. It looks like uh, either it used its strength or did some minor, you know, smithing, and the the they are they are just you know fused together. Okay, so I would need to actually break yep. it then. Yep. Okay, so I will gently use my claws with not hurting anybody uh, to just snap chains off of the rest of the survivors. Okay. Uh, and as they come off there, you hear various, you know, exclamations. Hopefully of, not freaking these people uh, out. <laughs> well, they, they, they saw the combat. They saw uh, yeah. everything. A couple of them are unconscious from, you know, injuries and such. Poor exception of the one who was half turned into a uh, thing is is very dead, fortunately. You are able to get everyone free, and Gillis is so thankful. Uh, again, she knows Scald. They have a, a, a good working relationship. And very quickly, not what you're expecting, like, you know, like, thank you and all of that, uh, Gillis runs over and examines the uh, prowling demon. And oh. she is, like, beside herself with uh, awe. She says. Oh. She says. Do you, do you know what this is? Um, as I'm as I'm uh, devolving, 
<laughs> <laughs> back to my normal self um i will walk over and take a look at what she's looking at i'm not a i'm not a metallurgist i but tell me what's what's exciting about this well, guy. skull says i i i know a thing or two and she comes and she puts her hand on it and you've seen her do that with uh jewel crafting where she can put uh -huh. her hand on something in fact that's how you you know which was her identifying things she puts her hand on it and like her she kind of makes like a little like this is titanite there are only two metals known to existence that are more powerful than it, more more resilient than this. The, the, I can't easily tell you how valuable this is. I, I mean, only adamantine and mithril are more rare. Well, that's neat. <laughs> um. Gull turns to Gillis and says... Uh, what do you say we make an arrangement? Uh, they they begin uh, just, just like, you no longer exist. Uh, because <laughs> this is, it, it's actually very adorable to watch because this is Scald's nerddom, is is crafting. Yeah. Uh, particularly jewel crafting, but she also is very, you know, familiar with smith crafting and everything, and, and Gillis obviously is as well in mining. And they just, like, 20 minutes nonstop talking about like what the possibilities are with this metal mm -hmm. you have vaguely heard the name uh titanite before but like you've certainly never seen it uh right. nor have you ever heard of anyone like you know like oh yeah this one adventurer had a titanite you know breastplate or something nope it is stupidly rare okay and you know i'm I listen to them talking, you know, and I'm super excited for them. And then, you know, five minutes goes by and I'm a little less excited. <laughs> Ten minutes goes by and just kind of sit down and cross-legged and kind of just hang out. And another five minutes goes by and he's just like, you know, knocking rocks around <laughs> the kick, ground. Kick. <laughs> and the, the miners are like, you know, kind of uh, just to uh, say a few things that some of the most of the, the weird green smoke was coming from this creature. Uh, but it uh -huh. doesn't seem to be coming out of the corpse uh, of the metal, as far as you can tell. Okay, good. And they explained that the, the creature kidnapped everyone and brought them down here, and there was absolutely nothing they could do about it because it was this giant, you know, rock metal monster. Yeah, and then they were incapacitated by this green smoke and whatnot. And it went very quickly. Uh, no one knows why Audrey came. Uh, no, no one has any idea. But Audrey did come to the top part where it was captured, huh. brought down after the rest of them. The, again, one of the things about the prowlers is no one knows what they want. No one, no one knows their motivations. So, what it was doing, like why it was doing this, you have no idea. Is uh, are there any completed weapons that he finished before we got there? Unfortunately, there was one. Yeah. Uh, it is, and what, what what sense am I getting from that? Is it is it like inherently magical from the process? Oh, or? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely magical. Okay, it is definitely magical. Well, I feel like this weapon belongs to the town, or if we can find whoever's family it was. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could definitely do that. They obviously the the other miners know. Yeah, so just just let them know. You should take this to their family and let them know what happened, and let let this person protect their family in other ways. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is a uh, a maul, so uh, it is a okay. it is a hammer like weapon. Uh, right. It is not made out of the titanite, uh, but it is it is magical and definitely it's made out of personite. It's, it's personite, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. Uh, and just real quick, as we wrap up here, um, what things do you want to do to try to put that ghost to rest? Since you were. Oh yes, saying that I didn't um, want to leave you. Hanging. Actually, there's there's a few things that I want to just like kind of recap, just to and, and we can just gloss over them sure. real quick. Um, a, I want to go to that farm mm -hmm. um, and find the family, um, give them uh, the tattered remnant of the of the of the of Aaron's uh, uh, outfit that we got to remember her by, uh, so we could find her family. Um, let them know exactly what happened 
in a vague <laughs> sense. Let's we'll just say she died in the attack with the meteor. Mm-hmm. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, not even spare them the gory details. I understand. Um, and uh, let her let them know where she's buried because we didn't know where she was from, and we wanted to give her you know give her some respect uh, before you know moving on, um, so that they know what's where she's at, and maybe they can visit her and help her go on to the next world, as it were. Okay. Um, Are you going to reach out to someone particular or some class particular to try to put her to rest? Oh, well, um, I would recommend, you know, maybe finding a, a cleric. There's uh who's, who's in town. I, I don't oh, know well, I, I, I wasn't um, trying to, to pull a certain character. I just wanted to know if like you were telling the loved ones to go get a cleric or, if you were getting one, I, I just wanted to, I wanted to understand what steps you were taking to help put her to rest. Well, I mean, it's, it's family business. I don't want to get in the middle of everything. Um, if it, if, if it seems like it would be easier for me to ask a cleric to do something, you know, I can pull a little clout. Um, I would definitely do that okay. for them. So if that would make things faster for them, I would absolutely do that. I don't have a lot of money to like donate to the church or anything. Mm, so you don't have any money. <laughs> uh, I could maybe trade a favor or something like that for the for the uh, for the efforts. But yeah, just get them squared away. Scald would certainly be happy to help, and uh, as as luck would have it, uh, there is a a very small uh, remnant of the uh, cult of the Raven Queen uh, here. Uh, mm. Not very common. Uh, not not a not a super popular god because you know she's a death god, but right. uh, you do find uh, Scald makes a uh, not inconsiderable donation to their cause. Scald says, well, "Well, in addition to the the contracting that I've been doing over the last few months, I I am about to become a very wealthy woman. I, I fairly confident that Gillis uh, will will shoot straight with me, especially after saving her life." Uh, and there's uh, there's a way that every one of those miners, uh, and even to the family of the the two victims, can all be compensated, and we can all become very very wealthy. Okay. Um, a plate mail is fifteen hundred gold. You know right. that's a lot of gold. A suit of armor made out of titanite. I don't even know. I would have to look that up. <laughs> uh, but it would be stupidly expensive, and only like the very yes. richest people, like say uh, the king. Yeah. would be able yeah, to that's afford. legendary item status especially if you can infuse it with magic precisely too. and um, so they're they're going to start working on that it's it's going to take a while and in fact even you know finding out exactly how to shape it and everything and i do i do want to not let aaron's family know that um uh i got th- that i got a vision from the raven queen and she will be taken care of in the next life okay very good that 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 absolutely does give them comfort throttleville is here with you uh he is able to teleport you back but before you leave is there there anything else that you would like to tell or say to Skull? I I know I know you probably can't come with us, and honestly, I don't know that I would want you to because I, I, things are getting more dangerous by the day, and I, I don't want to put you in the middle of that. And I know you have a lot of responsibilities here, so um, I will be back. And if you are still here, if I'm not back inside a month. Um, run inland. Oh, because something bad is going to come from the sea. Oh, that they do. Do you, do you know what it, you know? What, you know, there's a kraken out in the ocean. I've heard. Um, that's been harrying ships for a long time. Um, well, it seems it's been infected by an illithid. You know what that is, right? You've heard of the stories of the. Oh, I I am familiar. Cynical faced monsters. Yes. Um. Yeah, um, they got to the they got to the kraken, and now it's a, it's a crack lithid. And if we don't give this guy the staff in a month, um, he's going to set it loose on everyone. I, I I'd like to think that um, I would have taken a, a, sh- a short amount of time before we left Kalimvor to write out everything that's been going on to pass on to the king because I know he want to he wants to stay informed. He actually told us so when when we left they hey report back to me if you find anything interesting um i think this is qualifies as interesting so to pass it on to him and maybe put a little side note on there hey if you could tell beltrain too that'd be super cool <laughs> let them know what's happening so yeah i kind of wanted to come with me because i know that there's going to be bad things happening here if we're not successful but at the same time i don't want you walking into certain death either i'm i'm not, I'm not a fan of any of this and i 
don't want to leave your side, but I've got him. We got to save the planet from terrible, terrible people. Uh, well, the king does see you as very. I mean, he, you know, the, you can tell like schedules are cleared. Like clearly, obviously, he's the king. And and by the way, the king isn't always here. Masgate is a very important town, but it is not the 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 kingdom. The uh, sorry, the capital of Hyboria. Right. I haven't even told you what that is, but it is a very important city, and he is there. Uh, he's actually overseeing the fortifications. Ah, um, makes sense. And you can tell that, like, there were other things that he was supposed to be doing, and those people got told to go away. And you were brought in. And uh, now I do want you to know Urktok is there with him. Uh, but it does seem... Of course. Uh, before you saw the king, like, grasp his hand and like the the necklace the the jeweled necklace that Urtok is wearing like forced him to the ground uh, and so he seems to have control over him um, yeah. but uh, he he listens to every word that you say he asks a lot of questions you know he's not he's not doing any like you know evil scheming thing, things he's really interested in what you have to say he's really sure. interested in Kalimvor uh, he is actually uh, you know, just based on the, you, you give him kind of a summary of everything that y'all been doing. He's a, he says, I, I'm, I actually need to give a little more attention to Zintel Keep. I did, I was not aware. I, I, I heard things, but I have not been there in several years. And yeah, it, I mean, Ye Chicken is pretty good, but the rest of the place is just trash. Oh, I, 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 I wish to to let you know I appreciate your honesty. It is it, one of the hardest things of a king is to find out that. A part of his kingdom is is acting in a way that you would not wish. Yeah, plus they're trying to raise a dead god. Um, you might want to look into that too. Uh, Bane? Yes, <laughs> I would definitely... There, I, I, it is well known to me that, that the cult of Bane was a factor uh, in that city many years ago. Uh, but it was my understanding that Bane had been destroyed. But as... These things with demons happen, and his eyes flick over to the to Urtok. I give Urtok a wink. Oh, oh! If looks could kill, you you would. <laughs> it would be like a, it would be like a sphere of annihilation on you right now. Mm -hmm. Let us assume that has all happened. It has gone very well. He is very impressed with everything you have done. He really he asks you a lot of questions about Zental Keep. He asks you a lot of questions about Kalimvor because both of them are part of his kingdom. Uh, and he especially asks right. a lot of questions about Kalimvor because he has, there, like he said, there have been rumblings of rumors of war, uh, which is why he's been calling for the fortifications of his major cities. Uh, and on a, as important as Masgate is and as vulnerable as it is because of the sea, Kalimvor is closer to Beltrain. You know, he, he wants to, he's going to send even more reinforcements. And you hear him uh, mention the name of the uh, elder uh, that, that, distant bells had taken an interest to uh, mm -hmm. that he was going to make sure to get word to her and of course there are magical means to do that right and you know if if the tensions are rising between the two nations it's probably because the cancer crone cult is probably trying to stir things up to keep you guys distracted from what they're doing so that's classic bad guy of work of all you know? the things you have told me that that is the one that truly disturbs me the most because I have heard nothing of this cancer crone. Yeah, their, sim their symbol is an eye with a jagged scratch through it. You might see it here and there. Uh, no, I have not. I have not heard anything about that, and that really disturbs me because I have spy masters everywhere that report back to me, and yet I have heard nothing. That disturbs me because that means that they are working very hard not to be seen, and yet they don't seem to be trying too hard when you came across them. So that is uh, very unsettling. Well, don't feel bad. It's probably because of the spell that's been cast in the, in the entire plane by the uh, the master to not have his name mentioned. Mm. So it probably worked some of that into there. Oh, did I mention that part? That we're all cursed to not be able to say his name even if we know it? Which we don't. No! <laughs> uh, it, There's so many details, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he says, please do whatever you can. I will try to find ways to aid you. Scald has been absolutely instrumental in helping to defend the city and you know we we want to make sure that i want to make sure my kingdom is safe and i want to make sure my people are safe and i well, she is pretty awesome that she is uh in fact I, I between you and me it was her father 
the master jewel smith who um, made a little necklace for me. And he glances over to her uh, talk again. Uh, yes. I like him more yes, and more. Yes. Wink. Uh, it, sadly, sadly, her father is no longer with us, but uh, he was a he was quite the craftsman. And I, I am actually glad that you, uh, for, I, I, as you can imagine, I do cover an entire kingdom. You, you brought her back to my attention. Uh, she has been so helpful in setting up the defenses for the city. Thank you, good sir, Pinton. Uh, I wish you the very best, and please save my kingdom. And that's where we'll end! Chafing Armor, episode 127. Oh, that was fun! Yes, it was. Uh, you, Kaiju, Kaiju fight! Was so much excellence. So much excellence. I'm very oh, excited about this. Is, this. this is uh, <laughs> such a great use. And, and here, it, it, was, it was funny that, like, that literally, from the very beginning, I knew that was going to be a ring of growth. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> and so when you did that again i was like oh well here you go that's fantastic uh no just fantastic but uh thank you again uh james absolutely uh, and if y'all if it, wherever you're listening to this right now if you're using it in a podcatcher just click on that podcatcher to subscribe to chafing armor so you can hear more of our silliness if you're on youtube you can subscribe to us on there hit that click that little bell for notifications you know heck uh, check us out on social media i'm on chafing armor on twitter we've got chafing armor uh, facebook page where we post lots of silly things and uh, reach out to me I, I like it when people reach out but uh good night james good night sir thank you thank you take care and we will roll with you soon <laughs>